Hello and welcome to St. Luke's Anglican Church in Pembroke, Ontario on Sunday, March the 12th, which is the third Sunday in the season of Lent, and for many, the beginning of March break. As we come together, we ask God's blessing on each of us. And in this season of reflection, repentance, and drawing closer to the Lord, let's just still our hearts, lay aside our cares and distractions, and we invite you, Lord, to do a mighty work in our hearts to make us more and more the people you mean us to be. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have fo followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And may the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we say, O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And so as we praise him, let's hear his word. We begin with our first reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 5 this time, beginning at the first verse. My son, be attentive to my wisdom. Incline your ear to my understanding, that you may keep discretion and your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps follow the path to Sheol. She does not ponder the path of life. Her ways wander, and she does not know it. And now, O sons, listen to me, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her, and do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others and your years to the merciless, lest strangers take their fill of your strength, and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. And at the end of your life you groan, when your flesh and body are consumed, and you say how I hated discipline, and my heart despised reproof. I did not listen to the voice of my teachers or incline my ear to my instruction. I am at the brink of utter ruin in the assembled congregation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading today is from John chapter 4. We'll pick it up at the fifth verse, the gospel of John chapter 4, beginning at verse 5. So Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, Ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. 
Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so let's pray together. Father, we would worship you in spirit and truth. Pour out your living water upon us. Strengthen us by your word and spirit. For we pray in the beautiful and strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, perhaps you've heard the story of the person who was asked to read at a friend's wedding. And they were given the reading, 1 John Chapter 4, verse 18, which says, Perfect love casts out all fear. But this person was not familiar with the Bible and didn't realize that there's actually four books of the Bible named after John. There's the Gospel of John, which we just read from, and then there's the three letters of John. Well, this reading was meant to come from the first letter of John. But unfortunately, the person read, stood up at the wedding, and read the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 18 from the gospel we just read, which said, you have had five husbands and the man you are now with is not your husband. <laughs> Perhaps not an ideal reading for a wedding. <laughs> uh, well, that great story of Jesus meeting the woman at the well, it's a powerful story and we're gonna return to it, touch on it a little bit later, but we're continuing our sermon series on pearls from Proverbs, not covering every verse in the book of Proverbs, but, but looking at many of them. And of course, you at home, you can read through at your leisure the whole book. Again, uh, written largely by King Solomon about 950 BC, um, and he's seeking to impart wisdom to his readers and especially to his sons. He's uh, uh, in the first nine verse, sorry, verse nine chapters, He's outlining the uh, great and surpassing value of God's wisdom. Again, it's God's wisdom that he's seeking to impart, not the world's. And uh, then later in the book, you'll get into more specific um, uh, directions and instructions about holy living. And it is a very practical book uh, to help us uh, live a godly and, and, and a wise life. But it's also a reminder, I think, as it points to Jesus as the only one who ever fully was wise, fully lived as God intended. And so we find our grace and our help in the Lord Jesus. But as we look at this section of chapter five, uh, we remember that the book of Proverbs is 
wisdom literature of the Old Testament and uses many of the devices of Hebrew poetry. And we have discovered already that in a couple of places, the writer has compared wisdom to or, or personified wisdom as a woman. For example, in chapter three, talking about wisdom, it says she is a tr she is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Uh, and so that might have been a very appropriate way of speaking of wisdom uh, for a young man and saying to, to look at, at uh, this beautiful woman, this beautiful wisdom of God. And now he, he compares foolish living, including adultery, to an adulterous woman. Anything that's ungodly or, or uh, sinful, folly in God's eyes, uh, is compared in this case to, as this translation says in verse 3, a forbidden woman, or uh, in other translations it might say an adulterous woman. And uh, so again, he's speaking of specifically sexual sin, but also any kind of sin that is uh, not God's way. And so uh, it's a reminder, this passage, that in fact there is temptation. Um, it says the lips of a forbidden woman in verse 3 drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil. And we saw way back in the book of Genesis in the Garden of Eden how the serpent Satan tempted Eve with an apple and how it looked good to eat. We heard just a few weeks ago the first Sunday in Lent about how uh, the devil tempted Jesus and showed to him all the kingdoms of the earth or or bread that looked so tasty and, and that had an allure, a temptation, uh, uh, something that looked good, but it wasn't really good for us, We're not, not from God. And we know there are many temptations to sin in this world that the evil one will throw at us and we'll be, we'll be, some, we'll be susceptible to various ones depending on our own background and personality and nature. We may be easily tempted to anger, easily tempted to lust or to, to greed. Uh, and, and these things, of course, they may seem initially um, ill-gotten fame or riches may seem like a quick and easy solution to our problem and, and to give us uh, pleasure and, and freedom from pain. For example, drugs that people take. Uh, the, the dealer of drugs never says, here, take this hero heroin, You're gonna, it's going to kill you. No, he it says it'll, it'll make you feel good. You'll be able to forget your problems. And, but, and yet, clearly, even though there's, there's something appealing, something tempting about that which is evil, what's the result of it? In the end, it's bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Uh, her way, uh, her steps follow the path to Sheol, which in the Old Testament is the, uh, the place of the dead. Later in the chat, verse 14, it says, I'm at the brink of utter ruin. Sin leads to death. That's what uh, Paul said in Romans 3, 23, but the wages of sin is death. And again, look what happened in the Garden of Eden, how all creation, including Adam and Eve, were fallen as a result of their choice to sin, their choice to go apart from God. And so uh, let's remember that even though some sin may be tempting, in the end, it's empty and leads to destruction. I think of a movie, perhaps you've seen it. Actually, there were two versions of it. It was redone called Bedazzled. It's a comedy movie. It's a Hollywood fiction. Um, and it's uh, uh, not meant to be taken literally, of course. But there's some wisdom in the movie where the devil tempts a, a, a shy fellow who, who everything seemed to be going wrong in his life and how the temptations he's, that the, the devil will give, kind of like a genie, give this fellow his wishes. But interestingly enough, every time he got what he wished for, it turned out to be empty and be a disaster. And that's the ways of the evil one. We remember that uh, as Jesus says in John chapter 10, the thief comes to kill. And, and steal and destroy. So uh, don't be taken in. Don't be fooled by temptation. And I speak to myself as well. Uh, God wants to bless. Jesus came that we might have life and have it abundantly. And what he offers, though not always easy, is true and good. 
and eternal life. God wants to bless. The devil wants to trick us, makes something seem good, that ultimately leads to ruin. And there's a couple of strategies in this passage. Just as a few couple of weeks ago, we, we looked at Jesus' strategies for dealing with the devil. There's a couple of strategies reiterated here in this passage about dealing with temptation. Again, like Jesus in his temptations in the wilderness, most important to be rooted and grounded in God's word. Um, keep, incline your ear to my wisdom. Be attentive to my wisdom. You know, and, and uh, so we need to be rooted and grounded in God's word and God's wisdom and God's ways, filled with good in order to crowd out the bad, in order, filled with truth, in order to be able to recognize the lies and the deception. So I encourage us to take seriously God's word. I think of, of Deuteronomy chapter 6, where through Moses, the Lord speaks to his people and encourages them to read God's word, to, to memorize it. <coughs> excuse me, to teach it to their children, to write it on their doorsteps, uh, doorposts rather. And so we today look for ways we can take in God's word. I think of Jane, for example, my wife, who's taken some passages that she's memorized, memorizing and printed them out and put them on our bathroom mirror. Uh, you see people put scripture verses on plaques and paintings around their their house. Those are great things to do. Learning to sing songs that have scripture in them. M music helps us remember God's word. And of course, reading it ourselves, coming to church, um, t listening, reading, and taking it in. That's how we will be able to resist the snares of the evil one. But the other... Um, bit of strategy in this passage verse 8 says keep your way far from her that's the adulterous woman who's tempting you away from God um, and do not go near the door of her house and so avoidance you know uh, if someone's is tempted to to gambling well don't go to the casino right if someone's tempted by uh, alcohol or drugs. I ta spoke to a friend just yesterday who has a powerful testimony of being set free from drugs. He said he actually had to leave his hometown where he was because there were just too many temptations and friends who would suck him back into the old way of life. Sometimes we, we just need to avoid those areas. He'd lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We ask God to do his part and we ask him to help us do our part to stay away from that which is unhealthy and, and evil. Um, and so in this season of Lent, uh, know that the te temptations are real out there for each of us, that we have a real enemy, uh, but seek God's help to resist. You know, we, it's important that we try to follow God's way, but also, of course, and here we come to the gospel very briefly, uh, also we need to keep remembering that it's not our righteousness but Jesus and when we do fall out fall down rather we have a savior and so we have a, another woman in our readings today this time a real woman not a not a, an image of a wisdom or folly but rather a real woman a Samaritan woman remember Samaritans were those who were a kind of half breeds in Judaism and and their religion had gotten uh, watered down and diluted away from from Old Testament faith in, in Yahweh, the, uh, the God we serve, I am who I am is what Yahweh means, are the one true God. They've been, they've been watered down in their, in their, in their uh, beliefs and in their practice. And, uh, and this Samaritan woman, we also, you, know, you talk about an adulterous woman, she had had a lot of relationships, uh, but Jesus still speaks to her, still loves her. Jesus loves you and me. He loves sinners. He knows how weak we are. And he invites us to come to him for living water, which of course is a great picture of the new life that he gives us by the Holy Spirit, new spiritual and eternal life that fills our hearts and lasts for eternity, grows and grows and grows. And only Jesus can give us that. And so uh, we can come when we fall down, when we, when we do give in to temptation, when we are uh, wandering from God's path, we can always return in repentance 
and find that we have a welcome and we can drink deeply. And I invite us to do that today. You know, maybe we feel parched in our spirits. Maybe we felt a little bit far from God or, or caught up in things we shouldn't be caught up in. This is a day to return to him and invite him to fill you with his Holy Spirit, his living water, which he is pleased to give to all who ask him, to all who are thirsty. Thanks be to God. His ways are good. And when we fall short in his goodness, he brings us back. Amen. Amen. And so with those thoughts then, let us turn for a few moments to prayer. We want to just ask the Lord to bless not only us, but others who may need him. Let's begin by praying for those we know who don't yet know Jesus or who have fallen away from him. Maybe like that Samaritan woman, they have uh, uh, felt distant from God. And so, Lord, we pray for those in our family and in our community, specific individuals, maybe those who are caught in addictions, or given in to various kinds of temptations. Lord, draw them to yourself. Lead them to living water. Bring them to salvation. Today we also pray for those who have already said yes to Christ. Including ourselves, Lord, and our own congregation. Our denomination and our bishops, Bishop Dan and Charlie our brothers and sisters of other congregations in our community and around the world, the persecuted church, for missionaries, our companion parishes, St. Paul's in New Zealand, Anchor Church in Cornwall, England, and Church of the Redeemer in Recife, Brazil. Lord, all who have called upon you, would you strengthen us, Lord, to resist temptation, to be rooted and grounded in your word, to be more and more the people you mean us to be. Especially during this Lent, help us to draw close to you. And may, when we do fall short, may we come to you for cleansing and healing and a fresh start. We pray that you would fill your church afresh with living water. We thank you for how that's happening in places like Asbury in the States and, and other places where renewal is breaking out. We thank you for new members of the church here at St. Luke's and in other places for the work you are doing among your people. And we pray for more. We pray for more. Make us more and more people of prayer, Lord. We also pray for healing. For those who are struggling, and we know there are many, we thank you for many answered prayers, but we pray for those who are going through perhaps an operation or an illness, for those who are struggling emotionally or financially or in their relationships. Maybe we think of specific individuals today, or maybe it's us. Lord, would you send your healing? Jesus, you healed in the Bible. Heal again today. And again, we thank you, Lord, where we have seen answered prayers for all those testimonies we had this past Sunday at St. Luke's of answered prayers. Lord, make us a channel of your blessing, your peace, and your healing to others. Help us to be lights to the world. Lord, we don't just want to receive your goodness. We want to see others receive it. Lord, would you use us in your service, we pray. And as we pray also for the world, we pray for our leaders in government, locally, provincially, nationally, and internationally, that those that don't know you would come to faith in you. And Lord, that there would be a return to godly principles. We see the world going crazy in many ways, falling into temptation. Lord, would you send people who can 
stand up for what's true and right, but do so in a loving and kind way for the best for your people. We gather together all these prayers and praises as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation, Lord. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And I just want to share the collect for this Sunday, a special prayer for the third Sunday in the season of Lent. Heavenly Father, you've made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Look with compassion upon the heartfelt desires of your servants, and purify our disordered affections, that we may behold your eternal glory in the face of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May it be so. May it be so. Thank you again for joining me for this service today. Pray that your Lent continues as you draw close to the Lord, that you may be blessed in all your, all your needs and led by him in all your ways. Uh, I want to mention that uh, this upcoming Saturday, M March 18th, is uh, our Women's Potluck at 1 p.m. here at St. Luke's. We have a number of regular programs going on, our Bible studies, youth group, our uh, Sunday services, of course, prayer meetings, um, and uh, so you're welcome to join us for any of those ongoing programs, and uh, we are glad, we'd be glad to see you. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all you love this day this Lent, and always. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.